What are the first steps in writing a crime drama? To write a crime drama, you first need to know how story works really well. Because crime dramas are left brain, right brain. You have to know exactly the logical um, plot, right? You, your plot and your trails of evidence have to make sense, not just for your hero, your investigator, but also for your criminal. Your criminal definitely needs his or her own very structured story. But then there's the whole other emotional element, relational element to the story that you need to know how to tell well, because that's the thing that keeps, that keeps, is the page turner. That's the thing that keeps you coming back after the commercials or binge the next uh, episode is that, um, that underlying, the humanity behind all of it, right? Um, that your investigators need. And even, um, I think we've come a long way when I look at like TV from the 80s and 90s to now, even criminals have been, it's never black and white, like white, right? It's it's like the, you, we used to be able to get, get away with like the bad guy and he's sort of this stereotypic thing, but it's, we are not, bad guys are not black and white. Um, criminals are not black and white in real life. There's layers and layers to why they got to where they did. And so uh, those two things, the un un unlayering those for your protagonist and your criminal are the, for me, the foundations. Like that's where you have to start. You have to know how to tell a story really well and then how to really think through these two major chess pieces. So. What should happen the first 10 pages of a crime, thriller, drama, what's crucial? Mm -hmm. Kind of the same is really any story set up. Um, you're setting things up. <laughs> you're setting up your crime, you're, you typically, not you're, you, because you're introducing, oh, we're, this is a crime genre, we're gonna tell you about a crime that happened. So you're setting up your crime, your criminal world, your criminal, you're setting up your investigator, and his or her world and what that looks like. Sometimes investigators are professional, sometimes they're not. Um, what is, sometimes they're, this is their job and so that innately gives them a motive for having to investigate something. A lot of times they're not. They're maybe reluctant heroes or they get thrown into a situation where they're sort of forced uh, to investigate something and then you know become more obsessed about it. <laughs> but that's, it's really kind of, yeah, the first 10 pages, it's really the same as setting up any story. Um, your, main, your main characters and your world and the tone, what kind of ride we're gonna go on. The, if you would look at the pilot of Pushing Daisies, which is very fun, right? Very quirky, fun kind of crime story versus, uh, you know, Dexter pilot, it's, the tone's very different, right? So you're setting that up too, right away. I think you've said to start your story in the middle of things, come in late, leave early. Mm -hmm. Why is that? In media race, just, yeah, start in the middle of things. It's, I mean, really, I think for any story you want to do this, but I think it's really important for this type of story because you are constantly trying to build tension and suspense and you want to come in late and leave early. So that helps you um, build that, that pacing, that tension. Mm -hmm. You don't want extra... Really, obviously, like in any script, there's not room for extraneous, right? You only want what's on the page or on the screen to be there and nothing else. It, I think it's like tenfold for crime stories. If you're, tr especially if the tone is to, is less relationship, relational, less comedic, and more about the action, the thrill, the adventure, the suspense, the tension, because you're really, you don't want to leave any room. You want to just keep it super tight and keep us on that ride, you know, fast. Okay, so with, if we could use an example, mm -hmm. so let's say, I'm trying to think of the beginning of Sharp Objects, but we're not necessarily seeing all the mundane right. of her life. We're speeding right. it up. Right, right. I mean, break, yes, exactly. Um, you're only going to see, and honestly, that's a great, um, that's a great way of putting it because you really are trying to build, for your protagonist, you're really trying to build 
in the motive, right? What is driving them personally? Let's just take professionally off the table because um, especially for like detectives, like that is their job. So the motive, the, the, there's a different kind of motive because the motive is like, that's your job. Here's your case, you know? Oh, that's today's job. Um, but for like sharper objects, she doesn't have to take this. Um, and even like Breaking Bad in the pilot, the first 10 minutes, we're really seeing what Walter White's, we're right in the middle of the abyss of his life at this moment when he's just at the lowest of his low, like he's found out he's going to die and he's, he's not respected at school. He's not respected outside of school. So we're seeing that setup of that motive of why he's going to delve into the world of crime, criminal activity. So we're setting it up really fast and in multiple um, little scenes. Um, so I think that's a really, because we don't, it's, and he's, he's definitely more of the caper kind of, so it's a little bit different than a, a traditional detective kind of crime story. But even with the traditional detectives, you're seeing right away, um, they're getting launched into this crime, right? And they have to go on the scene and right away they're, they're trying to evaluate everything. They're right in the middle of this chaos. Somebody's just been murdered and this is a chaotic world. And what do we know? We have to quick figure out what we know. So you're given, you're, you're given as an audience and them as a protagonist are given just the pieces they need at that moment to propel them to the next scene. And then the next scene and the next scene, one of the things that's tempting for people who are newer in writing this genre and oh, I'm just as I was guilty of this is just wanting to throw all the evidence up front you know within that first 10 or 20 pages we don't need that we don't we shouldn't have that it's it's a rabbit trail and so we're going to lay carrots all the way through to the very end so you're only giving your your heroes exactly what they need in the moment to just get to the next step to figure out the next step and then the next step and then the next step and of course, obstacles are gonna get thrown in their way and bounce them around. So. so we don't want to make it too easy for the reader or the viewer to solve, and at times maybe throw them off, keep mm -hmm. them guessing. Yeah, I definitely. You don't want it to be easy for your hero. I always think about, I don't want it to be easy for my hero because um, that makes that person kind of boring and not very good at his job or her job. <laughs> Um, and it makes them not very human. So they may do things, they may make mistakes. Um, there's definitely, I, I always say like, you definitely want rabbit trails that don't pan out. They find a piece of evidence and it doesn't pan out. Um, they talk to a witness that they think, oh my goodness, I just solved the case or this is it, we got what we need and it doesn't work out. So you definitely want that for, for your hero, also for your, also for, of course for your audience. Yeah, you want to take them on the ride. So.